everyone, my name is Kelly Walker and I am a Product Adoption Senior Manager at Salesforce. And today I would like to talk to you really about boosting your org security with multi-factor authentication. That is securing your users access from the outside in. As we go through, if you think of any questions, I'll be providing resources at the end. But of course, you are always welcome to email me or reach out on Twitter. So please just go ahead and take note of my email address and my Twitter handle there. All right. So before we really dive in, we do just need to remind you that because Salesforce is a publicly traded company, we ask that you make any and all purchasing decisions based on what's currently and readily available within the application today, not based on something you may hear me say is forward looking. Now I don't talk too much about uh, anything that's coming in the future with security here, uh, but of course, if I were to say anything, just uh, don't use it to make any purchasing decisions. Today, we're going to really dive into what multi-factor authentication is. So if you have no idea, no worries. Uh, you'll leave here understanding what it is and why it's important. We'll then talk about it as it relates to MFA solutions for Salesforce. Talk about how to roll out MFA to your user base. Demo how easy it is to enable within your org. And then go through a quick wrap up with additional resources. Now, as I'm sure you know, trust is Salesforce's number one value. And with that, we are very serious about security because we understand that the confidentiality, the integrity and availability of Salesforce data is vital to you, our customers. So we take the protection of customer data very seriously. As we see security threats grow increasingly more common, it's really essential for you to implement stronger measures of account access security to protect your customers, their data, and overall your business. And as you see here, it really is a shared responsibility. At Salesforce, we build security into everything we do from the ground up. But our commitment to delivering secure products is really only half the story because security is a shared responsibility between you, our customers, and Salesforce. As a steward for your business's security, you really play a critical role in safeguarding your data and your customers' data. Your Salesforce data is valuable and it could be the target of what we call bad actors. So a key part of your security strategy is safeguarding access to your Salesforce user accounts really um, from the outside in, making sure that those bad actors can't even get into your work. And that's where multi-factor authentication comes into play. As you see here, it's one of the simplest, most effective ways to prevent unauthorized account access and protect your Salesforce products and data. Now we see here that MFA is really an extra layer of security to your login process because it requires users to verify their identity with two or more pieces of evidence or those factors to prove that they are who they say they are. Now one factor is something that the user knows, such as their username and password combination as you see here. Other factors are verification methods that the user has, like the code from an authentication app on a mobile device or a physical security key. For MFA, Salesforce supports strong verification methods only, and we'll dive into what that means in just a bit. Now, I also wanna pause here to talk about two-factor authentication. You may see that as you move around Salesforce, or you may hear about it as you talk about security. Now, for our purposes, they are synonymous, but when we start to talk about employing another factor for two-factor authentication, it really is you just need that one additional verification method to prove that you are who you say you are. In multi-factor authentication, you could potentially have more than one verification method. So uh, just keep that in mind. Again, for our purposes, they're synonymous. But what I want to do is think about multi-factor authentication, really agnostic to Salesforce. So without even thinking about how it relates to your user's account access, let's think about where we utilize it in our everyday lives. If you utilize an ATM or your bank card to go and take money out of your bank, well, you have two things in that transaction, right? You have something that you know, your PIN, and something that you have, your card. Boom, multi-factor authentication. You may also experience it when you go into credit card apps or banking apps uh, where you're asked to provide an additional code 
that too would be along the lines of multi-factor authentication. But really, why is it important? Well, because it helps prevent common attacks. So usernames and passwords alone really don't provide sufficient protection because it's easy for bad actors to exploit weak or reused passwords through common types of attacks like phishing and credential stuffing, as you see here. And phishing, whether uh, you, you know it or not, was one of the most successful attack vectors in 2019. So as we're all starting to work from home, uh, maybe we aren't taking the same precautions as we would in an office. We want to make sure that we're being very cautious, especially from those bad actors who are utilizing phishing to gain our username and password. Now, phishing is when an attacker sends an email to, to you that looks like it's coming from a company that you're familiar with. It asks for your username and your credentials, your password, through a website that looks credible. And just that quick, your, those bad actors have your username and your password. So what MFA does is really it protects against these type of attacks because it ties that user access to multiple and different types of authentication factors, really making it much harder for threats like phishing attacks to succeed ultimately making your Salesforce environment safer from unauthorized access from those bad actors. Now, you may also be using something else like device activation. Excuse me. I want to just dive in real quick to talk about how device activation is different than MFA. While device activation does require a user to use a verification method as a second factor when accessing Salesforce, uh, from an unrecognized browser, it's, it is limited because it doesn't apply to every login and users can use email or SMS, which we don't consider strong verification methods. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. So if we think about it, device activation is sometimes confused with MFA and rightly so because it's requiring another method. But the significant differences are that MFA requires that users use uh, a strong verification method as their second factor, and that they must provide that method every time they log in. So uh, that is where it differs from device activation. Now, you may also hear about SSO. SSO, or single sign-on, is a great way to improve your user's login experience, and it also reduces some of the risks associated with weak or reused passwords. If your users regularly access multiple apps in the course of their day, we would strongly recommend using SSO with an identity provider uh, utilizing MFA. That is really to further secure Salesforce and your other applications. So with a well-implemented SSO strategy, you can reduce password-related risks, improve authentication processes, and make it easier for your users to log in to frequently use applications. Now, you may be thinking, well, if a bad actor has one password, wouldn't they be able to get into uh, all of the different applications that my user uses? Well, really, in, in utilizing just one password, that gives you the ability to make it uh, much stronger. So I know I can't remember every password, and I'm sure your users can't either. But if we just need one really strong password with maybe 16 different uh, characters ranging from uppercase and lowercase letters to numbers and special characters, well, that could be much more secure than having weaker passwords uh, across multiple applications. So do take that into consideration. Now, again, if you have an SSO solution or if you're thinking about it, we strongly recommend that you enable MFA for your identity provider as an additional safeguard. Now, as we start to dive into MFA solutions for Salesforce, we keep talking about these strong verification methods. So let's dive into what those are. For our MFA, Salesforce supports these strong verification methods only, and that really is a method that a user has in his or her possession. So that's what makes it a strong verification method. Depending on what Salesforce products you're using, we support these different verification methods. So we have the Salesforce Authenticator mobile app, 
a third-party time-based one-time password or TOTP authenticator app. You may be familiar with Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator, uh, maybe even Authy. Or more of a physical security key using USB, Lightning, or NFC. Is that could be YubiKey or Google's Titan security key. Really, you choose the option or options that work best for your business and your user needs. Again, you could have a mix of all of these different verification methods across your users. One user could have a, a couple of uh, verification methods. It's really up to what you and your business needs. Now, we don't allow email and SMS text messages as a verification method because email credentials can be compromised, text messages can be intercepted. So it really is a lot harder for those bad actors to get control of an actual and physical uh, security key or mobile device than it is to infiltrate that email account or hack a cell phone number. So that's why uh, we don't uh, allow for those within, um, within MFA. Now today, Salesforce products each have a variety of security methods for safeguarding account access, including verification challenges when users log in from unrecognized devices and strong authentication for logins. So you'll see here the different clouds and products that support MFA. For those that aren't listed that you may be utilizing, just know that we're really hard at work developing MFA functionality for all of those other Salesforce products. Now, be on the lookout because once deployed or available, we'll be in touch with updates and resources as to uh, MFA for those other additional products. As with any major change in our org, we do have to really take a thoughtful approach to how we roll out MFA. So with that, we've created the, this path to MFA. We have get ready, roll out, and manage. Now, I would assume most of you are in the get ready stage, and that's completely fine. We have uh, really the following stages to evaluate your business and user requirements, work with your IT team to understand what they're already doing and how MFA would fit in with their roadmap. Uh, inventory users will come back to that and plan your rollout, your change management, your support strategies. It really is uh, worth taking the time at the at, up front rather uh, to plan for how you're going to train your users, how you're going to get verification methods in their hands, especially if you're using the uh, physical security keys how you're going to support your users. If you're a solo admin, uh, you can't necessarily be taking large chunks of your day to support your users because they've forgotten their mobile device at home or maybe have lost their security key. So think about maybe how we can delegate those support activities um, and, and management tasks to others in our org. Now, I want to circle back to inventory users, roles, and permissions because this is a great time to really look at what permissions your users have and understand if that's appropriate for the job that they need to do. You might have heard of something that we call the principle of least privilege. And this is really where you give your users the permission to do exactly what they need to do their job and nothing more. So I would recommend that you look at your profiles so you understand what level of permissions that you're giving to your users. Look at the users who are assigned to those profiles, understand if that's the right level of permissions, or if you can start to dial back. And uh, with that, starting with a profile that has the bare minimum, more or less, and then adding permissions through permission set, permission set groups, and different sharing possibilities through roles, role hierarchy, et cetera. Now, once you really have gone through and audited your users, you've talked to stakeholders in your organization, and you've started to plan the rollout change management and support strategies, we move into the rollout itself. So this is where we're kicking off change management activities, we're training our users, we're making sure that upon the first time logging in after implementation, they have registered their a verification method and they are good to go. If you are utilizing a, a security key, make sure that those are distributed to your teams. If you're using the apps, make sure that your users have uh, those installed on their phones. We'll then enable MFA by giving that permission to our users and then make sure that, uh, again, on the first time that they've logged in, they are able to connect the two. 
Now, after we've rolled it out, we move into the management uh, phase of this path, excuse me, where we look to our users really to give us feedback to understand how it went. If you're taking an iterative approach to rollout, maybe there are some lessons learned that we can apply to the next group. Uh, we also wanna monitor adoption metrics. This is not something that we want to be an obstacle in uh, them being able to access their user accounts. We just wanna make sure it's more secure. And so we wanna make sure that this is not something that's preventing them from, um, from logging in or, um, uh, or uh, utilizing our, their Salesforce accounts, excuse me. As issues arise, we wanna make sure that we're troubleshooting them or supporting our users. As I mentioned, it happens. We lose our phones, we leave them at home. We lose our security keys, we misplace them. All of these things need to be supported so that our users are not blocked from getting in and accessing their user account. And then optimizing our overall security strategy. So MFA may just be the first point to a broader security strategy in your org. Maybe you don't have SSO today, but that's something that you want to roll out uh, within the future. So really starting to look at um, how maybe you can optimize uh, the other security features that are out there and how MFA plays into that. Now, when you're ready to launch MFA, there are really two pieces to it. There's an administrator piece and a user piece. So as an administrator, we will create a permission set so that our users are uh, provided the two-factor authentication for user interface login user permission, and then we'll assign the permission set to users. Now, we can definitely add this permission set to our custom profiles, or sorry, this permission to our custom profiles, but it is worth noting that maybe for our rollout, we want to take a more strategic approach or a, a more iterative approach so that we're rolling it out to certain groups of individuals that may not fall within the same lines of our profiles. So just keep that in mind. Again, you may see two-factor authentication in some parts of Salesforce, uh, but we are working to change all the nomenclature to multi-factor authentication. As I've said before, it is synonymous for our purposes. Now, as we move into the all users portion, it really is obtaining that verification method installing the app on our phone or getting the security key in our hands, connecting the method to our Salesforce account, and then uh, logging in with our username and our password, and then that uh, registered method. You'll see all this in a demo uh, in just a minute. Before we dive into the demo though, I do want to let you know that my Salesforce org that I'll be showing you um, has administrative privilege privileges. I am an admin within the org. I've already installed the app on my mobile device and the app that I'm going to be using is the Salesforce Authenticator app. Now you'll see that we create a permission set for MFA. We then assign it to our users and then as a user you'll see how easy it is to register that, um, that second factor. Now if you've never seen the Salesforce Auth Authenticator app, this is what it looks like. It is, just as it says, fast, frictionless, and free. Um, it's a great app to use. It's easy to use for your users. Um, but it also gives you a lot of information as you're logging in. So you see here what action needs to be approved, what user is requesting the action, from which service uh, is the requested action coming, what device the user is using, and the location. So if your users uh, maybe are a victim of phishing and they've given their username and their password unknowingly to a bad actor with MFA enabled, they would get a notification that someone's trying to log in. And if they don't recognize any of, the de of these details, if they haven't tried to log in, then they could easily deny it. But if it was them and they do need to gain access to their account, they can quickly and easily approve it through that push notification. So let's look at what that looks like in a quick demo. Okay, I have pre-recorded this demo just to make sure that uh, any issues that uh, usually happen to me are avoided. So we'll hop in here. 
and you'll see that I am first creating a permission set. If you've never created a permission set before, no worries at all. It's really quite simple. We just look for permission sets within our quick find. And once there, we'll create a new permission set. Now, the uh, multi-factor authentication uh, permission is a system permission. So after we name it, we should provide a description, but we won't for this demo purpose. We'll head down to system permissions. Once in system permissions, uh, we'll be looking for two-factor authentication here. Again, uh, we are in the process of renaming everything, so you'll still see two-factor um, for maybe the next release or so. We'll select two-factor authentication for user interface logins for our purposes here. You always can select it for API logins, but for us, we're looking at user interface logins only. So with that saved, I'll go ahead and assign it to my user. So within Manage Assignments, we'll look for my user, which in this demo org is just called user user. So adding the assignment to that user 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 <laughs> record for a lack of a, a better naming there. Um, and now I'm going to go and log out. So once I log out upon my next login, I will be uh, prompted to connect or register my verification method. So I'll log in here. Now I am going to be using the Salesforce Authenticator app. And that's what shows. If you are using a different uh, app or a security key, you just choose another verification method at the bottom there. But I am using the Salesforce Authenticator app, so I move over to my mobile device. Uh, after taking a brief tour and backing up my account, I will go ahead and add this account. So with this two-word phrase, I'm going to enter that into the uh, space on my desktop. and connect. Now I need to make sure that my username and service is as I would have expected. And with it um, matching up, I will go ahead and connect. So that's how easy it is to add an account. I'll go ahead and log back out of my account and log in. And uh, once I do that, you'll see that I will receive a push notification uh, really to approve or deny access. So every time after uh, I have MFA enabled for my user account and I have registered my verification method, I will be asked or prompted to approve. So as I go to log in here, I will see the username, the service, the device, uh, everything is as I would expect. So I will go ahead and approve. And just like that, I have uh, enabled MFA for my user. I have connected that verification method of Salesforce Authenticator, and I have uh, logged in. So it really is that simple, and that is the demo. Beyond what I've provided today, we have a lot of great resources. We have a user authentication module on Trailhead. It talks about uh, it talks about two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication, my domain and SSO. So there's a lot of great information within that one badge. We also have a very detailed admin rollout guide that I would encourage you to look at. It goes into greater depth around each of the phases of the path that we looked at. It also really dives into the differences between the different verification methods. So if you don't necessarily uh, know what type of method you want to utilize, the Authenticator app or a, a security key, you can go through and see all of the differences. Maybe have a conversation with your stakeholders um, so that you can really tick what your user need, which ones meet your user needs. We have a video on YouTube that's basically the demo that I just went through uh, to help you set up MFA for your org. And then we are here to support you on the Trailblazer community. So there is an MFA getting started group on the Trailblazer community that we would recommend that you join. And with that, individuals like myself or experts on the security team are always monitoring to see how we can help you with your questions. 
We also have a great program that you can help us with. It is the user research program. It's really us asking you to help us shape the future of existing products, new designs, or concepts. And if you are interested, you are more than welcome to take a picture of that QR code or follow that URL. All right. Now, we don't have any um, opportunity for Q&A today, so I'm just going to point you right back to that community group that I talked about. Post any of your questions there, and as I mentioned, individuals like myself or those experts on the security team will be more than happy to help you. I also shared my email address and Twitter handle at the beginning, so hopefully you took note of that uh, because you always had the opportunity to reach out to me directly. With that, I want to thank you so much for having me. I hope you've learned a little bit more about multi-factor authentication, what it is, why it's important, what it looks like for your users in Salesforce, and then how to roll it out to your users. Thank you so much again for joining me, and I hope to see you on the Trailblazer community.